Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima's Shenanigans of 1977. How's it going, everybody? Hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful, hope you guys had a wonderful evening and hope you guys survived. Um, hope you, uh, hope you got in Massachusetts survived a little bit of snow that we have. A little, a little bit of snow out there, no big deal. It, but not, not, None of it's on. None of it's on the, the the pavement, but it's on grass surfaces and car tops. And all you do is I get up early in the morning and just um, sweep everything off and just go on my very go on my very merry way. So, um, AEW Rampage was on uh, at seven o'clock tonight due to the NBA All Star Weekend. You know, T, uh, TNT and the NBA have worked some out some kind of deal, and uh, and it is uh, decided that the that the AEW Rampage decided has decided to be on at seven o'clock as a special start time, and uh, it was really it was really cool to say the least. And um, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to um, to all this. So, um, so so looking forward to what having an AEW Rampage, Mo mostly basketball theme. It had four important four matches, two are title matches, and it kicked off. With the uh, the trios title, the Elite. Now there's been um there has been a rumor going around about who is going, who is signing, who is the big name that's going to be signing with the WWE. Rumor has it, it as rumors has it be CM Punk, but I highly doubt because CM Punk wants to come back to AEW. Some say it was Kota Ibushi. Some say it's Kenny Omega. You know, it could be you know it could be anybody. I just read a lot of people are saying you know a lot a lot of people are saying it's, it's Kenny Omega. And Kenny Omega will be put under a microscope if that is the case. So, and plus he's the IWGP United States Champion and he's the AEW Trios Champion. He will have to drop one of those titles. He'll drop both titles if he's going to go to the WWE. But we will, we will, we shall see. As the elite, that's um, Matt Jackson, Nick, uh, Matt, Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks. And Kenny Omega to fate uh, with Na Michael Nakazawa and Brendan Cutler in their corner against AR Fox and Top Flight will be the Martin brothers Dante and Darius and Brent. No, Brandon Martin is not related to them. But anyways, this was a heck of a matchup. This was, you know flying maneuvers, you know high flying maneuvers, counter holds and all, whatnot. I mean every, I mean this matchup was going crazy. But in the end, the Elite re do retain the trios the trios championship. But the lights went out. And then, appearing on the ring entrance were Brody King and Malachi Black. It seems like they want a piece of the Elite. And the lights went uh, go out again. And then they disappear. So a lot of mind games. And remember, there's only two-thirds of that team because we got Buddy Matthews, also the third member of the House of Black. So a lot of mind games are going to be played by the House of Black. Will they be the ones to knock off the Elite to become the Trio's champions? And get one to be the third Trio's champions. Lexi Nair interviewed the Guns, and the Guns had this "we don't care" attitude. Who we face, we're gonna beat them and retain the titles, basically, because he has two battle royals inside the two the two teams that will join in the fatal four way with the acclaimed and the Guns. So, so there's that. And Mark Henry um, sat, did a sit down interview, hanging out with Joy, uh, Orange Cassidy, but then Wheeler Yuta came out and dissed Orange Cassidy and the best friends because oh, I'm glad I got out of the group. I got three badass dudes I'm learning a lot from, and he's the Ring of Honor Pure Champion. So he's challenged. He's he basically challenged him for the All Atlantic Championship, and so Orange Cassidy goes, "You want a shot? You got it." So, champion versus champion with the All American Title on line. That match will happen at Dynamite. So, um, so there's so so there's that. Yeah. So yep, yeah, and. Um, Ricky Starks and Daniel Garcia went one on one, heck of a matchup, until Sammy Guevara tried to get involved, and then Action Andretti 
starts beating the crap out of Guevara. And the two were brawling in the back. And the two went, went out brawling. And that gave Ricky Starks the advantage and picked up the win over Daniel Garcia with the Rochambeau. And then Guevara, you know, Chris Jericho, the leader of the Jericho Appreciation Society, who's doing a call commentary, he's not happy about it. Sammy Guevara comes out and starts yelling for Tony Khan. He says, you got to make the matchup. Me versus Action Andretti next week or something like that. That's what Sammy Guevara wanted. Him and Action Andretti going one-on-one. -on -one. And evil, an evil Uno cut a promo on uh, John Moxley. He's going to bring honor back to the dark, to the dark order. Well, we shall see about that because I'll tell you one thing right now: John Moxley's really, I mean, evil, evil Uno's been out of shape, and so is about John, John Moxley. And so we will find out. Uh, we, we will find out how Evil Uno feels about this. TBS title was on the line. Jade Cargill versus with the lovely Layla Gray versus Vert Vixen. And Jade Cargill. Now Jade Cargill is getting like this Goldberg like streak going at 53 and 0. Will she reach Goldberg streak? I'm not so sure. And Goldberg streak, you know, he went on to feel like, you know, 107 and 107 and 0 when he first won his first world title. So um we shall see in that moment. Be right back. All right, and uh, you know Jay Cargill could be on that Goldberg like streak. I don't want to compare Jay Cargill to Goldberg, because if I do that, and a lot of wrestling fans be on my case about it. But it's uh, as far as the record streak goes. So that's the only thing I'm going to compare Jay Cargill to is that record streak, because Goldberg started out similar, while well, during his days in WCW, you know, and so be that as it may at that. Uh, Mark Henry interviewed Dustin Rhodes, Swerve Strickland, both two, two, both guys talk smack. No trench in the corner of Strickland. Only, um, only uh, Parker Boudreaux was, and so and uh, Dustin Rhodes did not care about trench, and so time for enough talk. Time for a main event, and as Dustin Rhodes was entering the ring, uh, Swerve Strickland tried to sick Parker Boudreaux on. Dustin Rose, Dustin Rose was ready. I think had one of those ring wrenches and hit him in the stomach with it, or something like that. So, so there's that. And uh, both men had a had a great matchup, but in the end, uh, you know, Dustin Rose had the match won, and Parker Boudreaux pulled him out of the ring, slammed him against the stairs. That would give uh, Rose a win by a disqualification. And then both, uh, and then both men decided to join in. On the attack, and then all of a sudden, they go to get the cinder block to take out Rhodes with. But then Keith Lee's music on. We have not heard from Keith Lee. And Keith Lee kind of rose up and uh, from behind them and beat them both up, uh, coming to the aid of a bloodied up Dustin Rhodes. And uh, so I am just uh, very, very happy about that. Um, Keith Lee's got a new look. He completely shaved his head bald. And believe me. And, you know, Keith Lee is not in a good mood. And if you mess with Keith Lee, you're in for a world of hurt, man. So, that is it. That's all for AEW Rampage uh, Event Center for the 17th of February, 2023. As we um, almost head to or towards the end of February. I mean, like I said, we got, what, 11 days left of February? There's going to be a little bit of snow coming uh, in the last few days of February. Also, in about 16 days, a little over two weeks, a little bit over two weeks, I'll be on vacation. I'm taking the week of my birthday off. I'm really excited. And expect a lot more videos to be throughout my birthday since I am home and I'm on vacation. I needed this vacation after all I've been through. Definitely deserve this vacation. From July of last year to until now. I mean, I've been through a lot. And I say, that's it. On the next episode, episode 374 of the show, we're going to do a double feature. We're going to we'll talk about what happened on Sm tonight on SmackDown and NXT Level Up. And and we will get, I will give my picks and predictions for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view uh, premium live event. 
tomorrow. All right, so that's it. That's all that we have on the show. Episode 373 of Eric Lehman Shenanigans is complete. And until the next episode comes rolling around, please, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big BFE, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet both for raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now. <laughs>